In this video, we are going to answer the question that has been asked this week, is the truth not enough? Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is EJ and in this video, we are going to be breaking down a new series on Netflix. Ryan Murphy has another production. It's in the Monster Family, which is a follow up to the original Dahmer series, but this time we're following the Menendez brothers. My goodness, we're like two years after Dahmer came out, we're here with another version of the Monster series where Ryan Murphy and his team look at tragic cases that have happened in our real life history with these disgusting murderers. And we figure that out, explain it, maybe throw some extra stuff that does not need to be in there. We will talk about that. My goodness, brother smooching. Sure, Ryan. But anyways, one of the biggest things that's kind of stopped me from loving this show is it's not a horror show anymore. Dahmer, for what it was, was terrifying. Structured to be, like, felt like a classic, like, Silence of the Lambs, Manhunter, these kind of awesome serial killer dramas. That's what this reminded me of with Monster. This show, it's just a Ryan Murphy expose drama. This kind of brings me more to the assassination of Gianni Versace, which I did not really love. The performances were fine, but I wanted Monster to continue the horror vibe. Is that here in some points? Yes, there is times where I do feel like the, the way that they film, you know, the, the parents, my goodness, Kitty and uh, Javier Bardem's character, I always forget his name, are absolutely disgusting people. And the way they're filmed, they look like old school, like Hollywood monsters. They're just so terrifying looking. And I will say the, you know, the titular murder that happens here that starts the Eric and Lyle story. Yeah, that is he that that's pretty crazy. That's pretty graphic. It's pretty in your face. I appreciate those because again, I wanted more of a horror aspect to the show. That's what dragged like dra I think honestly that's what dragged us all into Monster with the Dahmer story. It was a legit terrifying watch. This loses a lot of the 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 the, the terror and replaces it with scandal, replaces it with light light homoeroticness which is still too much for this and overall i have to say i don't really like what was presented here it's a story that i have vaguely known throughout the history of pop culture this is very oj simpson era this is very you know that time period where murder cases you know i mean what the long island lolita all of this stuff was getting very big at this time so the menendez brothers is a story most people are familiar with but my goodness, why watch this? Watch a documentary. Watch interviews with them. Watch, I don't know, Barbara Walters do a 2020 interview. I'm sure she has one with them. Yeah, you know what I mean? This is just the point of this just feels so... Uh, it didn't add a cinematic flair to it. It didn't make it feel like I was watching a horror film. It didn't make me feel like I was watching a true crime documentary. It's just in this weird middle spot that just feels so meh and i don't usually feel that way about meh i thought monster was one of ryan murphy's best productions when it came out i thought it was truly a, a well-crafted series this one does not get that praise we have to talk about the Ryan Murphy of it all. This man likes a heightened reality. We all know that I'm an American Horror Story diehard super fan. I understand that he wants things turned up to an 11, which works in some cases. It works in some avenues. And I definitely think it could have worked here, but there's certain choices that were made throughout. I mean, I just think that the music choices, I think some of the acting choices, I think some of like the cinematography choices just, uh, it almost hinders the experience. As as opposed to heightening it but one of the things that i think is the most egregious thing here is the slight far too close relationships between lyle and eric there is a multiple scenes there's i think episode two has them kissing on the lips sure and there's also a scene where they're like all dancing and partying and they're just too close to each other again if this happened in real life sure may, maybe but like we don't know we're adding very senses sensationalized stuff to the story very like taboo touching things that maybe don't need to be touched or poor choice of words anyways you know what i mean like this is just stuff that i'm like if this was there, if we knew the Menendez brothers as this extremely homoerotic duo who happened to break free from their abusers, 
I could maybe, maybe see it, but it just feels like we're adding this touch that needs to be there because the show needs to be a little saucy. It needs to get us a little warmed up in between the sheets. And I'm like, but do, does it? Because I don't think so. You never once tried to sexualize the Dahmer show. Uh, Evan Peters is far cuter than both of these boys put together, but I wasn't trying to be like, oh yeah, I love watching Evan Peters touch boys. I, I, you know what I mean? Like, why? The, the, the artistic choices, the very Ryan Murphy choices of this, I definitely don't think he is horrible at all of these true crime adaptations. Dahmer had its issues. It's definitely a, a touchier subject than most. I think the Gianni Versace was okay. I didn't watch Impeachment, but it seemed to also be pretty polarizing as well. Maybe we should avoid these true crime things. I'm not even watching the Aaron Hernandez stuff because I don't want to touch on what they're doing. Ryan Murphy's heightened reality for these series could definitely be good in a fictionalized version. Whatever happened to Inspired By, you could have had a story of two brothers killing their people to set themselves free. And we didn't need to name them the Menendez brothers. We would have been like, oh my God, isn't this crazy that this is just like this case? And it would have worked. I think those inspired by, based on a true story, is a good gimmick, is a good way of going about it. But when we're trying to tell the story of these two brothers, this is what's going to happen. This is the power that I think we need to talk about. You are putting a story out here that a lot of people may be watching. This is like one of the number one things on Netflix right now. And this is what they're going to walk away from the story. They're not going to sit there and Google research, do all that jazz. The, the power that fiction has over reality it is crazy but i do think this show will have more of an influence than someone reading the wikipedia page of what actually happened it, it's it's sad thought but that's what my fear is with the show is people are gonna see that and go that's interesting oh that's cool oh that's what happened oh that's how saucy these brothers were the boys don't need no more fan mail from gays in jail like i'm sure they're probably tired of it and now we're just opening up a pandora's box and this has nothing to do with eric's statement i know he released something online talking about the depiction of lyle the lies that were here and that's where i got that is the truth not enough statement because that's how I feel. Like, I'm not really pro-defending the brothers. They did do a crime. I'm not really like, you know what? You guys are great upstanding citizens. They still did a crime. I don't agree with what they did, even if it was to get out of a horrible situation. It's much like the Gypsy Rose case. Like, it, it's touchy waters. That's why I didn't watch that either. Because again, these are real life people who are alive. These stories are still alive. These people still can be affected by what is happening. And we're just playing with it. The Ryan Murphy heightened reality, you know, uh, saucy true life stories are interesting but can be dangerous and I think this is one of the more dangerous versions. Now you may be asking is the series any good? To be honest it's fine it's middling I find all the performances to be okay like the structure of the show is fine there's a, a great episode focused on Nathan Lane's character I believe that is like episode four five no episode seven i believe that is episode five is the all about eric episode i think the all about eric episode is one of the best filmed and one of the best acted episodes i think it's the hurt man it's what it's called that one really does kind of pad in the the realness of the story i think the best of all of them then you get to like again the nathan lane story he's kind of the uh the person working on the case and all that and you see his backstory and why he's attached to it there's a lot of stuff that are moving pieces that again i love watching Nathan Lane. I think the two young actors who are playing the Menendez brothers are fine. It just doesn't go that extra oomph. It's not campy acting, so it's like a campy situation. It's this very heightened reality, but very real acting at times, and it just clashes. It feels like when I used to watch uh, Batman and Robin from the 90s, and George Clooney is doing a dry line reading of the script. Everyone around him is goddamn cartoon characters, and he's like, what are you doing, Mr. Freeze? That's what these actors are. It's like, they're so like, I cannot believe that this is happening. And then the world around them is like banana cuckoo pants crazy. It's just this weird dichotomy that I don't think works for the show. Hold on a minute. Did you just order a grilled cheese and tap water? Yeah. How many shrimp do you have? Like an actual number. Overall, though, I do think it, like I like the fall of the yuppie era. I like this kind of conversation. I also like that it it, it doesn't 
it doesn't shy away from the privilege that was used here. You know, the boys spending the money after what their father did and how he used his privilege to do what he did for a very long time. How these people were ignored because they're kind of rich, uppy people. It, it, it's interesting. I think there was some conversations to be had here. I think if we would have took away the scandal from the show, took away the saucy nature from the show, and made it, to be honest, what what some people may have perceived as a, a boring crime drama, that could have been fine. This should have been an ABC, you know, Fox kind of TV show, but the FX, Hulu, Netflix of it all makes them feel like they can go that extra scandalous route. And I like when Ryan Murphy does, again, play with history. Hollywood is a great example of a show where Ryan Murphy rewrote history. That whole team for that show kind of changed perspectives of a lot of things. And that was fine. It added to the experience. But when you're starting to manipulate the truth, when you're starting to theorize, and again, that's what that's my biggest problem with like the second half of this is when we start theorizing about things. Oh, well, could it have been this? Well, was it this? Was it this? I don't know if we need to really know why they killed their parents. I don't know. I just don't, I don't care. And I think that was my biggest problem is I don't really care about the high, the how and the why of this, but the, the show is so obsessed with it. And I just think that oh, that opens a Pandora's box that wasn't fair and does distract from the later episodes. I think it starts off strong, them going into the funeral. Then I love like the lie or the Eric episode. I like seeing a lot of this. But seeing the depiction of Lyle, especially what Eric said, seeing a lot of the, the acting choices, seeing a lot of the narrative choices, it just kind of pulls me away from it, and I'm not allowed to be fully engaged by what's happening. My last point is kind of a question for you true crime obsessed people. Is this show needed? Are shows like this in general needed for the conversation? I also go, do we really need true crime podcast where we're trying to like figure out a cold case from 15 years ago and we're going to bust out to it? I'm like, do I need like Sally Joe and her husband that have never done anything trying to figure out crimes? That's how I feel about Ryan Murphy and the company. Like, do I need a bunch of people who know nothing about legalness, who were not there for the Menendez brothers situation? Maybe, maybe if Ryan Murphy or someone Brad Alchuk, you know, one of the people, Max Winkler, somebody who was on this damn production was attached to the story, who could give their insight. It could be interesting. There's a, a movie years ago called My Friend Dahmer, which was written by a kid who was in Jeffrey Dahmer's class, who was kind of close to him and was maybe almost potentially a victim in a situation. That worked for me. Why? Because that came from somebody who understood the situation. But we're all these kind of outsiders speculating on what's happening. I used to be a tabloid gossip. Ooh, what is Britney Spears doing? What's J-Lo? Actually, I'm still talking about J-Lo's relationships because, girl, did my review of that documentary ruin y'all's relationship? Anyways, it feels like for these outsiders looking in on the story and able to judge, but that judgment happens to real people who are still alive. Maybe, maybe if this was like what they're doing with the uh, potential Ed Gein story, it's like a season three, Charlie Hunnam's in him, maybe something like that. It's, it's a bit further removed from our current timeline, but you know, when we do Aaron Hernandez, when we do like a John Benet Ramsey inevitably, when we do these things, this is such still so fresh, still so new. And again, I, I, every creator should be allowed to do what they want to do. If you want to tell the story, tell the story. But there should be ways to do it that doesn't feel so icky. This is that's the easiest word I can use for this show. It's icky. I appreciate the filmmaking. It looks fine. The time period. I mean, what are we doing? Late eighties, early nineties. That is a time period I will soak up in entertainment. But my goodness, just the way this all like unfolds. It's why I don't like the true crime era. I always go back to that Halloween movie, Halloween, uh, the 2018 version where those like true crime podcasters are messing with Lori and then Michael ends up whooping their ass too. That's how I feel like maybe some of y'all need to get slapped by these people. Maybe some of y'all need to get a, not even just a physical slap, but somebody telling you in your face going, yo, that's not cool. Like that's not like how we tell this story maybe that would wake somebody up but for now we're going to keep getting stories like this do you if you guys like true crime stuff does this stuff attract you do you guys like the the, the truth the documentary styles the the podcast styles or do you like these like sensationalized versions i never know where i fall but either way i feel weird this show made me feel things that i didn't really want to feel there it is, my feelings on Monster, the Lyle and Eric story. I watched this so you don't have to. 
I look though. I, well, the asterisk I will put to that. Watch it if you want to. It's it's not the worst time of television I've ever spent. But again, if you are anywhere aware of this case, if you are ever icked out by people telling true crime stories, I feel that way about a Marilyn Monroe movie. I feel that way about every time we do a, a famous biopic, and I'm just like, but why? Huh? Okay, sure. That's how I feel about this. I definitely got it an ick from it. So let me know what you guys think. Did you watch this? Did you like it? Did you you know were you offended? by it share your thoughts down in the comments below subscribe to my channel give me a thumbs up if you did enjoy make sure you guys are checking out my other channel flickering myth as well flickering like lights and myth there is interviews there is so much stuff happening there my agatha all along coverage is going to be over there watch that witchy ass show too that's good not based on real things i can't be offended by it anyways so let's talk about the monster series let's talk about true crime stuff right down below